So let's chat about how to keep your kidneys healthy and strong. It's World Kidney Day today as we're broadcasting. And so in this episode of Healthy Savvy Life, we want to talk about how you can optimize your kidney function and keep yourself healthy and well, because what you may not be aware is that 90% of your kidney function can be lost before you ever experience any symptoms. So if there was anything, uh, any time that prevention is better than intervention, it's in looking after your kidneys. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Corey Sievers. I'm the co-founder of the Savvy Team. And here in the Healthy Savvy Life show, we share hints and tips to help you reach that high level of health and wellness. So wherever you happen to be catching us, consider liking, subscribing, following, all that jazz. And if you do have any questions, then do please feel free to ask. That's what we're here for. So uh, if you happen to be jumping on live, by the way, do give us a wave. But again, if you're catching the replay, hit us up with any questions. We're here to uh, help. So yeah, interesting. Uh, when we're dealing with kidneys, uh, we're talking here about how to keep your kidneys healthy and strong and avoid all of the the nasty things that can go that can go on with our health. But before we jump on into uh, how to keep your kidneys healthy and strong, uh, it is important that you take uh, you know pay attention to this notice that we're not going to be sharing any medical advice here. So all of the information is general in nature. So please uh, you know consult your your doctor if you have any any thoughts as to the appropriateness of the information with regards to your own personal health and well being. So, you know, but that being that all being said, you know, it's like a lot of t people, when they think about kidney health, they think about kidney disease. And here in the Savvy Team, we're not about really like attacking the disease. We're about optimizing wellness. And the kidneys have a really important part to play in your all-round health and well-being. You know, with, with cardiovascular disease being the leading killer in the Western world, with you know, um, you know, things such as breast cancer and prostate cancer, and everything, everyone's concerned about those organs. But the poor old kidneys, they keep you healthy and well along the way. And we, you know, we do liver detox, we do bowel detox, and very little, very few people do a kidney detox. And yet, this, these are a couple of little helpers that are, are your best friends in terms of keeping, or some of your best friends, in terms of keeping you clean, healthy, well here and into the into the long run. So what I was saying before is sadly, uh, you know, and unfortunately, 90% of kidney function can be lost without you experiencing any symptoms. And this is why it's so important to know the symptoms. We're going to talk about what are some of the early warning signs? What are some of the foods that you really should avoid uh, for optimal kidney health? We'll talk about some of the natural things that you can do as well to optimize the health of your kidneys. And so if you look after your kidneys, then they help to filter all the rubbish out and then it looks after the cells of your body. It looks after you. It helps you in the prevention of all of the other diseases. So a really, really important part to play. So in, in terms, it, it is currently right now World Kidney Day for this particular year. So what I like about World Kidney Day, as opposed to some of the other ones like the Australian Kidney Health Awareness Week. And while that's all important, you know, it's interesting. I was looking at the, the differences there just in the scope of these programs. And Kidney Health Awareness Week was was raising awareness about early detection of disease. Whereas Kidney Health, or Kidney um, World Kidney Day is about raising awareness about the importance of kidney health. And I like that focus a lot more. Let's talk about how we can optimize our kidney function so we don't get sick rather than detect the disease early so it can be treated. Because, you know, in reality, once you start to lo once your kidney cells are damaged, if you've let your kidney function degrade so much that they're damaged, medically, they pretty much will tell you dialysis, transplant, or death. They're your options. So... And I've seen and heard many people bounce back when their doctors have told them, there's nothing you can do. You're, you're a great candidate for dialysis. We're going to have to sign you up for that. And they've just sort of said, I'm going to see, give me a few months. Let me see what I can do. Let me see whether I can turn this around with lifestyle change. And they've done it. And so, so much better if you can turn your health around before the damage occurs to any organ, whatever that may be. So that's what we're here to talk about 
in this particular episode of the show. So, you know, we're broadcasting all around the world here, but, you know, obviously we're coming from Australia here and, you know, one in three Aussies are at risk of kidney disease. That's a lot. Um, and so, you know, three and a half years is the average waiting time for a transplant, but many people wait up to seven years. So, you know, avoiding leaving it become so damaging that the only way is for a transplant, so, so important. Diabetes and high blood pressure are the two most common underlying causes of kidney disease, okay? So, and kidney disease, approximately 15% of all hospitalizations in Australia. So, you know, chances are you sort of thought you've never really thought about that, you know, the kidneys. And, and yet when you think about it, you know, so if, if diabetes and high blood pressure lead to kidney disease, one in three Australians are at risk of kidney disease, then it's something that each and every one of us really need to think about. So, so when we're talking here about this whole issue of, you know, kidney health, we're really focused on kidney health, not avoiding kidney disease as such. Because it, you know, here in our organization, we're very passionate about, you know, really looking at correcting the underlying causes rather than attacking the symptoms. And so, you know, rather than I'm going to share with you some of the symptoms and the, uh, you know, issues that, that can mean that you have uh, problems with your kidneys. But what we've got to do is we don't treat the kidneys per se, although a kidney detox can be helpful. What we do is we actually look at some of the underlying causes, some of the things that we can do to optimize our all-round well-being. And then that, of course, looks after our kidneys. So if we can look after the mitochondria, the cells of the body, all of the rest of the pathways of the body, then we'll look after our kidneys. But there are some specific herbs and nutrients and th foods you can use to optimize your kidney health. So, you know, when we deal with this, we're looking at the fundamentals. What are some of the underlying causes of poor health and disease? Well, we assert that it's excessive toxicity, that there are two fundamentals, excessive cost toxicity and a lack of nutrition. And so what we mean by that is obviously when we're dealing with, if we deal with kidney health, so you know, not enough of the supportive nutrients to optimize the structures of the body, the, the, the actual health of the kidneys and the, you know, the precursor uh, effects as well. And so not enough of the health and nutrition and too much toxicity. So if the kidneys have to filter out all of this rubbish and you're not giving them the raw materials and the through your lifestyle and food choices, all that sort of thing, then you're going to have troubles, right? So that's why we tend to say that wellness, well, you know, achieving wellness could be as easy as one, two, three. And so what do we mean by that? So achieving optimal well-being, increasing your health span, not just your lifespan, but your health span could be as easy as one, two, three. Just find ways of decreasing your exposure to toxins. So altering your diet, changing to safer products that you use in the home, wise choices. Increasing the nutrition that your body needs. So aiming for the 90 nutrients your body needs each and every day and optimizing the body systems. And some of those systems are, for example, the detox pathways. And one of those, just one of those detox pathways is your kidneys. So what are these seven detox pathways? Well, you know, I like to think of the detox pathways as like these slippery slides, really. So, uh, so if you imagine that, you know, that all of the detox pathways are like the, the ways of the toxins being able to leave your body and imagine them being slippery slides, what's the first thing that we know that is needed to make these slippery slides function? Water. Well, from kid, for kidney function, for bowel function, for so many health benefits, most people are not consuming enough clean water to really clean these things out, especially when it comes to the kidneys. But what are these detox pathways? Why do they need optimizing? Well, the skin and the bowel are the largest detoxification pathways, so we could liken them to the first two large slippery slides. So uh, for those of you listening into the podcast or uh, joining us on Instagram, and if you don't have the visuals, then, uh, you know, swing by and check out some of the visuals on, uh, on the Facebook page. So, but just imagine seven slippery slides and two larger ones anyway. And so then we have the liver and the kidneys sort of working together. Uh, they're pictured here like blue slippery slides. So 
they're working together sort of in tandem. Some of the same herbs and nutrients that optimize the liver also optimize the kidneys. Then we have the lungs and that we don't think of the lungs as a detox pathway, but certainly toxins leave our body in our breath. Then we have our lymphatic and circulatory system. They're sort of working together as associated pathways as well. And so, you know, we're looking here at the moment to really look at the kidneys and the yeah, and the importance of detoxing is, is you know, paramount when we think about 90% of the function of the kidneys can be lost without experiencing any symptoms. So what are the warning signs? So what are some of the warning signs? Let me, let me just share those with you. So, uh, for example, some signs might be high blood pressure. Uh, that's one, pre, you know, it's both a precursor and a sign. So could be changes in the, in the amount of times you go to the toilet. Could be changes in the appearance of your of your urine. So it might be frothy or foaming or colored pink or whatever, and that means there could be blood in the urine. Uh, puffiness in your legs, ankles, puffiness around your eyes, pain in your kidney area, sort of like pain in that lower back region that's general and achy rather than, you know, spinal and definitely muscle related. Tiredness, loss of appetite, difficulty sleeping, headaches, a lack of concentration, itching, shortness of breath, nausea and vomiting, uh, bad breath and a metallic taste in your mouth, uh, muscle cramps and pins and needles in your fingers and toes. So, you know, this is why they call chronic kidney disease a silent disease because there's often no warning signs. Whereas you know, I would assert that chances are there were, there were actually warning signs. There were some of these things going on, but they're so easy to, you know, to just explain away, uh, you know, related to other health issues. And so we think nothing of them and we don't look after ourselves. And so I hope that's not you. Uh, you know, chances are if you're taking a look at the sort of material that we share here in the, in the Healthy Savvy Life show, then... You're somebody who wants to look after yourself and optimize your well-being, slow aging, you know, biohack your way to health, well-being, longevity, and a longer health span, hopefully. But understand that these warning signs aren't bad. They're sort of they're sort of like the dashboard lights that go off in the car that say something needs to be done. Well, you know, we love what Dr. Molly Roberts says in this instance, that your body will start by whispering. Then it'll start talking. And if you don't pay attention, it's going to start yelling and shouting. And then you have an illness. So if you have any of those early warning signs that we just went through, then get yourself checked out, you know, have have some blood tests and all that sort of thing. But, you know, even if even if you're just concerned now and you don't want to go and do that, you can start optimizing today. You can start looking after yourself, changing your lifestyle, drinking more water, having healthier foods. And they're all the hints and tips we're going to cover in this particular show, but before we jump on, uh, jump on and do that uh, for a little bit of fun, what I wanted to play is a, a short clip from the movie Three to Tango, and it's just a bit of fun about about kidneys and looking after your kidneys and how you really got to look after your poor kidneys. So let's have a listen to that particular show. Well, I, I guess I have to keep seeing her. Of course, you have to keep seeing her, you moron. Ask I'm a professional. I went to graduate school. I did 72 all-nighters my senior year. I did a semester in Egypt. Do you have any idea what toilet paper feels like in Egypt? I delivered cinnamon rolls on a truck with bad suspension for three years. Do you know what that does to your kidneys? Your kidneys, your kidneys, your kidneys. My poor kidneys, my freaking kidneys. My poor freaking kidneys. My freaking scarred, bruised kidneys. Well, let's hope that you don't have poor, scarred, bruised kidneys. And if you do, then let's see whether we can do something about that. But, you know, more than, you know, when we think about all this related to kidney, chronic kidney disease, and 90% of the function can be lost before any symptoms show up. That's why it's just so important. If, if ever there was a time that prevention is better than intervention, it's certainly with kidney disease. So definitely check with your doctor 
um, you know, it, it might be worthwhile knowing if you do suffer from some of those significant signs. But otherwise, we're going to jump on into how to keep your kidneys healthy and strong. And that's really for everyone, for all of us, whether you have something going on or whether you're looking to, uh, you know, just looking to optimize uh, well-being for your life. All right, so the kidneys, think of your kidneys as an extremely sophisticated waste disposal system. Uh, you know, it sorts non-recyclable waste from recyclable waste 24 hours a day, seven days a week, while also cleaning your blood. And much of this waste is, you know, sort of produced by the general body processes and the food you eat, etc. So amazing organs. And the main job we could say of the kidneys is to remove the toxins and excess water from the blood. And, and so in, because of that, kidneys help to control blood pressure, reduce blood cells and produce blood cells and, uh, and, and keep the bones healthy as well. And so, you know, you, you've probably seen pictures of kidneys, but they're roughly the size of fists and located deep in the ad abdomen beneath the rib cage. So they're hardworking organs. They're definitely very hardworking organs. And uh, the proper balance of all the salts and acids uh, in the, you know, they keep the proper balance of salts and acids in the body to produce hormones and enzymes to, as I mentioned, you know, deal with your blood pressure, to, to deal with the internal water balance. And this is where, you know, fluid retention, all that sort of thing can be implicated in kidney problems, make red, red blood cells and help maintain the blood composition and pH levels of the blood, maintain strong and healthy bones and keep your mineral balance. So, they're actually very, very important organs in the body. And, you know, they don't get a lot of love, and I could say, in our modern world. So here are some 10, here, are, I'd just like to go through 10 common habits that could be actually harming your kidneys. And number one is the overuse of painkillers. It is very well known that over-the-counter painkillers like the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, all those, you know, the, the ibuprofens and all that sort of thing, May get rid of the aches and pains, but they're pretty they're pretty harsh on the kidneys, especially if you already have decreased kidney function. So you'll definitely want to, if you already have decreased kidney function, then you'll want to be talking to your doctor about that. But for most of us, just avoiding those over-the-counter painkillers uh, wherever possible will help your kidneys. Number two would be abusing the salt shaker or the salt in processed foods. So it's not so much, uh, you know, I don't believe uh, from the research I've seen that it's so much good healthy salt, such as the, you know, really good sea salt or the Himalayan salt, the Celtic sea salt, mineral rich salt. And especially if you're not overusing it, if you're just salting your food, the biggest problems are the hidden salts, the salts, you know, the basic processed sodium chloride salts that are just found in so many processed foods. So uh, these are really problematic. So abusing the salts um, and abusing the salt shaker, really, really avoid just using the typical processed salt. Uh, and, and so going out and having salty foods and all of that, that's pretty much going to be very average salt used. So be careful there. Number three would be eating processed foods. So these are the 10 things that can really, 10 common habits that can harm your kidney function. And processed foods are significant sources of things such as salt and sugar and chemicals, uh, sodium and phosphorus. And, and when we, many people who have kidney disease need to be more focused on those sorts of things such as phosphorus and, and mineral balance in their diet. But, but again, just for each and every one of us, these processed foods just put an extra load of chemicals on the kidneys. So download the free Eat Savvy approach. Follow the 12 steps for the benefits of the Eat Savvy Diet and how to get started on our blog, and uh, you'll be looking after your kid. That will really help you to look after your kidneys. Number four is not drinking enough water. I mentioned this before. Sometimes we can drink too much soft drink and tea and coffee and juice and not enough fresh water, and that's what the kidneys really need to flush the system out. Number five is actually missing out on sleep. A good night's rest is obviously... You know, good for our all-around well-being, but it turns out it's good for your kidneys as well. Kidney function is regulated by the sleep-wake cycle, and that sleep-wake cycle, that circadian rhythm, helps to coordinate kidney function and, uh, and the kidney's workload and functions throughout the day 
you know, or, or during that 24 hour period. So a good regular sleep and a good refreshing sleep, important. Number six is too much processed meats. So these processed meats can generate high amounts of acid in the body, can be full of nitrates and other chemicals, again, that can cause problems uh, and overload the kidneys. Uh, and so, you know, proteins are needed and there's a lot of, in my opinion, I feel a lot of misinformation about protein. Most people aren't, unless you're a bodybuilder chugging down lots of um, protein shakes 10 times a day to try to, you, 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 you're not likely to be consuming too much protein. Now, if you already have chronic kidney disease, then that's another thing. You'll be wanting to, to work with your physician on that and definitely adopt a healthier lifestyle. But you may need to pay attention to the amount of protein you're consuming because you've already got damaged kidneys, kidney function. So for most people, though, too much protein, it's a myth that too much protein will damage the kidneys. That's not, in, that's not entirely true. It's a bit of a misrepresentation of what goes on. Because we've seen, for example, I mean, obviously, it, it's actually more likely too much carbs. So people who follow a ketogenic approach, a clean ketogenic approach, often see their kidney function improve out of sight just incredibly. So, and, that, and this is partially because too much, you know, too much blood sugar, diabetes is more linked with, uh, with kidney damage than too much protein. So most people are eating far too many carbohydrates and sugar. And it's unlikely that they're eating too, many, too much protein. That leads me to number seven, which is eating too many um, foods high in sugar. Okay, so sugar contributes to obesity and that increases the risk of high blood pressure and, and diabetes. Uh, and, and they're two of the leading causes of um, kidney disease. So in addition, uh, you know, sugars often, in addition to just the typical things we think of as sweet, understand that sugar's added to almost everything that's a packaged food. So again, if you're steering clear of most packaged foods, then you're going to be decreasing your salt, your toxic salt content and your sugar content. So the more you can make yourself and, you know, or the cleaner foods you can eat, the better. So number eight, these are the these are 10 common things that are messing with your kidney function. Smoking. So you know that it's smoking is not good for your heart and your lungs, but smoking is not good for your kidneys either. Okay, so people who smoke are more likely to have uh, signs of kidney damage showing up in the urine. So number nine is drinking alcohol to excess. A little bit won't be harmful unless you already have kidney disease, but regular heavy drinking, you know, and, and that's more than four drinks a day is what's considered medically heavy drink, regular heavy drinking. So four alcoholic drinks per day has been found to double the risk of chronic kidney disease. Heavy drinkers who smoke have an even, an even higher risk of kidney disease. Smokers who are heavy drinkers are about five times likely to develop uh, chronic kidney disease. So number 10 is sitting still. So sitting around for long periods of time has also been linked to the development of chronic, disease, chronic kidney disease, but they don't, researchers don't really know the exact link there, but they do believe it's, it's associated with obesity, glucose metabolism, you know, not burning up the sugars. We sit around so much, we, we have too much carbs, we sit around so much, so we're actually not burning that up. So it's turning to fat and the whole vicious cycle starts up there. So there are a number of other things that can mess with your kidney function, but there are 10 general everyday habits that aren't necessarily optimizing your kidney function. So following on with that, uh, looking at some of the things that you can do, uh, you know, as I was mentioning, your, your kidneys play a crucial role in the whole detoxification process. And so they're constantly filtering the blood and producing urine and, and dehydration and an overly acid forming chemical laden diet are key causes of ineffective kidney detoxification. So what are some of the things that you can use? So straight up the bat, some helpful tips. So things such as drinking more water, following the eats heavy approach, which helps you to reduce toxicity uh, through your diet and increase nutrition. And this is also an anti-inflammatory uh, approach to eating. So really good for kidney and liver health. In fact, the health of all of, all of your body. 
looking at the things such as green superfoods, spirulina, chlorella, the um, all of those greens are powerful for kidney health. Okay, so even spinach and kale, those sorts of things, eating more of those, green tea, all helpful. Specifically, um, so things like cranberries, you've probably no doubt heard of uh, the benefit of cranberry juice uh, for kidney infections. So cranberries can be good. The noni, noni, Hawaiian noni and noni are very good for, for again, similar to cranberries. Uh, also cherries and blueberries, all of those sorts of rich, uh, rich foods that are, that are high in antioxidants, any high antioxidant food powerful so again the curcumin from turmeric uh, powerful for the for the kidneys specifically herbs such as celery so even celery juice but celery seed garlic parsley devil's claw is um is a, a herb that's specifically good for the kidneys and a dandelion all really really powerful so they're all just just give you some 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 hints and tips but what what are some other things that you can do so uh, lemon juice, uh, a lot of people find benefit from getting up in the morning and having uh, a good glass of water with lemon juice, like a half a lemon in it, and drink that down. That can help to flush the kidneys and the liver. Uh, a vegetable juice with, uh, you know, with greens in it, uh, celery, uh, spinach, those sorts of things, a bit of beetroot, uh, a bit of ginger, a bit of... Um, Turmeric, those sorts of things, really, really powerful. Lemon, again, avoiding too much of the sweet fruits, though, so that you you don't want to jack up a lot of your fructose uh, intake uh, just to get these foods in. And so a lot of people aren't used to using just the greens and everything. So if you need to sweeten it up, uh, find some natural stevia and just sweeten it with a bit of stevia and keep it low in fructose. But dandelion tea, dandelion tea is good for the liver and the kidneys. Uh, anything more parsley, parsley juice, ginger, turmeric, cranberry juice. Uh, the problem with cranberry juice, by the way, is it can be very sweet. It can be sweetened. You know, a lot of people have, you know, be, even been trapped by because cranberries are very sour. This is part of the benefit of their their astringent nature and sourness. It, it makes them quite cleansing. But but a lot of the people have been surprised by dried cranberries uh, actually being. 20% of the ingredients is just added sugar. So again, you've got to be careful about cranberry juice and all that sort of thing because it can be giving you a load, a sugar load. Yes, it can be helpful for urinary tract infections and all those sorts of things, but there are some other alternatives there. Spirulina, blueberries, asparagus, baking soda, even just having some baking soda can be quite uh, efficient to prevent declining kidney function. You've just got to know when to take that though because if you... If you have a dose of baking soda and then just before a meal, then you can blunt your stomach acid release and that's not good for your digestion, so you produce other problems. So again, not near meals. So, you know, starting your day, a good tip for cleaner kidneys would be to start your day with a cup of, you know, warm, filtered water, lemon juice, about 10 to 15 minutes before breakfast to flush away the toxins. You could you could then follow with a, a, a green juice or smoothie if you're into fasting, you know, just continue fasting. That will help. Drink plenty of water and uh, and and continue your fast. That will help with autophagy and and giving your body a rest and giving your organs a rest from the from the constant um cleansing and uh, of all of the the foodstuffs that you're taking in. Any antioxidants. So uh, all of the things like grapeseed, pine bark, uh, turmeric, green tea. Uh, all of these are powerful as well. So I have some other tips for you somewhere here as well. <laughs> so maintain, look, we're talking here, if you just joined, we're talking here about keeping your kidneys healthy and strong. And we've been dealing with some foods and nutrients and things that you can do, but some other general tips as well. Making healthier food choices. So download the free Eat Savvy approach. That will really help. Make physical activity a part of your routine. That really can help as well. So aim for a healthy weight. So obviously being more overweight linked to kidney problems. I mentioned getting enough sleep, mentioned stopping smoking and limiting alcohol. Another one is managing stress. So stress can also interrupt the detoxification pathways. 
can interrupt the kidneys. Certainly can burn out the adrenals, which sit on top of the kidneys, but uh, also not good for kidney function. Le and certainly uh, manage your diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, if you already suffer from those things. So specifically to leave you with some, some tips for cleaner kidneys. So to actually give you some, some powerful tips for cleaner kidneys, let's go through them. Number one would be, I've already covered it. Number one, more water. Drink more water, drink less alcohol, less juice, less soft drink, less chemically laden drinks, and, and, and the like. Now, coffee and tea, if you drink coffee and tea, then you'll need to drink more water. That's not to say that you should necessarily avoid those. And of course, if you have, again, if you already have chronic kidney disease, this is not medical advice. You'll have to work with the doctor. We're talking about everyday people optimizing their kidneys so we don't lose our kidney function. But just know that there are lots of things you can do. We've had a number of community members turn around their, their, their failing kidney health. And so even with some people being told they would need dialysis, some people told they'd have to have a kidney removed, uh, et cetera, overcoming that and being able to turn their kidney health around, shocking their doctors, so it can be done, but you do need, a, you, you will need, if you do suffer from uh, kidney problems, already established kidney problems, you will need a good doctor to work with to, to monitor your, your levels there. We've just seen a diet, fixing the, following the Eats Every Diet and fixing up your diet works wonders. Doing a, a specific detoxification program can really help because it takes the load off the other detox organs, more on that in just a moment, but really decreasing your exposure to chemicals from all sources, even what goes onto your skin, etc. So just looking, do I really need to use that? Could I find a safer alternative, etc. Weight management, bowel management, alkalizing your system. Uh, I mentioned things such as dandelion tea and all of those different juice ideas, really, really powerful. But number two is to really focus on the, the, the the second tip is some of those things I went through, the 10 common habits that can mess with your kidney function. So tip number two is really let your lifestyle help and not hinder your kidneys you know, uh, or any of the other detox organs. So eat clean, uh, eat savvy. So maybe key, a ketogenic, low carbon, clean approach, avoiding packaged food, increasing your vegetable intake. Being careful of a high carb diet and diabetes and insulin resistance because this can lead to kidney disease. You know, and as I said before, it's not a high protein diet. If you already have poor kidney function, that's when high protein can be a problem. But high, too much protein is unlikely to be the cause of your kidney issues. It's more chemicals, not enough water, too many carbohydrates, high insulin levels. So again, you know, insulin resistance, too much. High diabetes, pre-diabetes, high insulin levels, high blood sugar, all of this is starting to be linked to many, many diseases, chronic kidney damage, heart disease, etc. So it's just, you know, it's just so important, it's just so easy to, um, to prevent some of these things by changing your diet. I know it's hard to begin with when you are addicted and understand that sugar and carbs actually can activate the addiction centers within our brain. And so it is like overcoming an addiction. That's where support can really help you there. But So again, eat clean and eat savvy. Uh, include when you're doing that some of the helpful foods. So I mentioned vegetable juices, smoothies, lemon juice in the morning, dark antioxidant rich vegetables and, and, and low sugar fruits. So cranberries, lemons, uh, lemon juice, limes, blueberries, watermelons, okay, it can be a bit sweet, dark cherries. Uh, celery, parsley, asparagus, spinach, kale, dandelion greens even. So if you, if you don't spray poisons around, you can go and harvest dandelion greens from if you've got weeds in the yard. <gasps> Shock horror. Um, but root vegetables, beetroot, ginger, turmeric, really, really helpful too. Seaweed, so spirulina, chlorella, they're powerful too. So even kelp noodles, uh, see, if, if they're not covered in processed stuff, um, you know, kelp chips, those sorts of things too, to give you more of that seaweed. Good for the kidneys. Again, careful of the salt and the additives and all that sort of thing. Polyphenol. So a little bit of dark chocolate's okay. Coffee can be okay. It's not going into excess because these polyphenols 
are very beneficial. So, and again, careful with the sugar if you're doing the chocolate. So I'm talking about dark chocolate. Read the label. Uh, you know, a lot of the times there's just added milk product. Whereas if you can find a dark chocolate that has, that has, for example, cocoa butter, cocoa solids, and just a little bit of sugar, then uh, there's nothing in that. And and sometimes you can experiment with them, and they're actually quite uh, quite nice. The eighty percent and more uh, cocoa better. Uh, another thing that uh, when we're dealing here with kidneys, kidney issues, is some of the problems that can happen. Uh, kidney stones. If we're dealing with kidney stones, uh, sometimes kidney stones can be a calcium buildup, but often it's it's an oxalic acid buildup. This is part of the problem that many people are having too many oxalates uh, in their diet. They can be having too many too many um, too too many of the things that calcify in their system. So some people can be nightshade sensitive and nightshade vegetables, tomatoes, eggplant, capsicum, even cucumbers, but zucchinis, uh, potatoes, these sorts of things, chili peppers. Uh, and these these can trigger uh, can trigger reactions in the body that that cause the buildup of crystals in the body. So a lot of people notice that their joint aches and pains go away when they remove nightshade vegetables. I got rid of headaches by removing nightshade vegetables. It can set up an inflammatory response in the system, but also it can cause a, a buildup of, of of crystals in the body, and that may mean that you build up kidney stones. Moving on to oxalic acid, a lot of people, uh, we've even seen people develop kidney stones because of their habit of, you know, they've gone they've gone full on plant-based and they're having raw kale smoothies all the time and their system isn't actually doing very well with all of that high oxalic acid load and they've ended up with kidney stones. So again, being careful, follow the eat savvy approach and we've got you covered there. If you're having kale, it's better to lightly blanch that. So the kale and the chard and the silver beet and all that sort of thing, it's better if it's lightly blanched and sort of rinsed. And so that decreases the oxalic acid. It gives you all of the other rich phytonutrients there. So, so uh, and uric acid too. So if you have a really, if you have a lot of people suffer from gout, and this is basically an acid body chemistry. And so... So the uric acid can really build up in the extremities and actually cause damage and be very, very painful. So, so that's mostly, uh, that, you know, it's not from eating acids. It's mostly from eating acid forming foods, too much sugar, too many grains, too many processed chemicals. <clears throat> and this really can wreak havoc on the kidneys too. So the things that can help clean the kidneys, also all of this helps clean out the gout as well. So um, good idea to, to, to follow some of those things. But tip number four, that was tip number three uh, to include some helpful foods. Tip number four is to supplement, to really get into some of those things that I mentioned there. Antioxidants, the turmeric, the grapeseed extract, the, the green tea extract, the noni, the trace minerals that have potassium and magnesium, really powerful, spirulina and chlorella and seaweeds. Uh, the specific things like devil's claw, celery, dandelion, parsley, these are all fantastic. We we specifically use a blend with some of those herbs in it to uh, to help people optimize and relieve gout and uh, you know have an anti-inflammatory effect, you know, get rid of some of the waste product. But alfalfa grass, barley grass, wheat grass, um, garlic, these are all helpful. So other things too, uh, B vitamins can be very helpful for the kidneys. Marshmallow root. Marshmallow root is very good for the kidneys as well. So tip number five would be to optimize the other detox pathways. One of the easiest ways to take the load off one particular pathway of the body is to optimize the others. And that's why in our detox program, we look at uh, helping you to optimize or you know, spending a month optimizing all of the detox pathways and then amazing things can happen there. So, so hopefully there's been some tips for you there but but interesting when we're talking about optimizing these other detox pathways there's a lot of research coming out now that you know there's a gut brain connection uh, there's a gut everything connection of course but it turns out there is also a bit of a gut kidney axis that goes on and the the gut microbiome is 
is you know obviously you know, important in the body a lot of research indicating that now but it's also been linked to kidney health so it's important in the waste acid balance and in you know signaling things going on in the gut to the kidneys to upregulate uh, excretion etc but in the recent years uh, research has shown that that with the kidney dysfunction kidney stones chronic kidney disease all of this on the rise uh, obviously the suggestion is that diet and lifestyle is to blame but researchers have also found that gut health and damage to the microbiome may be one may be enough to actually initiate renal damage so gut dysbiosis research suggests that gut dysbiosis so an imbalance in all of the bacteria in your gut is enough to induce uh, kidney dysfunction and set the cycle off so so yeah about uh, just looking here at some of the research there i mentioned about oxalic acid but about 80 percent of kidney stones are calcium oxalate types and so there's a lot of things that can in in you know that can actually cause an oxalate load but gut play gut your gut and your diet plays the biggest role there so um looking after your gut can make a huge difference uh, the research shows that emphasizing prebiotic fibers and probiotics can make a huge difference in uh, in reducing general inflammation and actually showing better kidney function uh, in the general population and in people with chronic kidney disease. So lots of different things that you can that you can do, but one of the first steps that you could take that won't cost you anything is to go and download the Eat Savvy approach. So. The Eat Savvy Diet is a food choice spectrum concept. And, and so what that's about really is helping you to find foods that are lower in toxicity and higher in nutrition. So there are 12 general principles to follow, but the download sort of gives you an idea, and this is constantly changing as we're, as we're really finding out new information, but it's about, you know, the foods, the foods that will help most people reach the higher level of wellness so if there's a food on there that you're allergic to of course you'd avoid it but for most people if you eat on the higher end of the spectrum you'll reach a higher level of wellness okay so you might notice that it matches our illness wellness continuum the more you can eat on the top end of the scale the more you will reach that higher level of wellness so if you're looking specifically for a program to help you optimize the detox pathways and look after your kidneys, then we do have our detox wellness program. Uh, and so just reach out to us if, uh, if you'd like to tackle that. All good, but spare a thought for your kidneys, your poor kidneys. They're working hard for you and they don't get a lot of loving, okay? Because they're just hardworking organs. They'll work to the, you know, they'll work to the death. 90% of your kidney function can be lost before you experience any symptoms. So the more you can look after them now, the better they'll be able to look after you now and into the long run. So just remember that, you know, when we're looking at all those kidney symptoms that we were showing before, that, that symptoms are not enemies to be destroyed but they're sacred messengers who encourage us to take better care of ourselves. So that's it for this particular episode of Healthy Savvy Life. So it's Corey Sievers here encouraging you to be savvy.